Hi, Tim Clapham here from hellolux.com and in this tutorial we're going to be working with the Cinema 4D Volume Builder in combination with the Formula Field to create some effects a bit like this. Jumped into Cinema and in here I've got an extrude object with a text spline. Now this will work with any model. Um, I'm just using text in this example. Also got a matrix object and as you can see it's just like a grid array um, and you can obviously change that um, to vary the effect. So what we want to do is just switch that extrude back on and disable the matrix for now. I'm going to add this extrude to a volume builder by holding down Alt, come to the volume menu, add the volume builder. That's set up as an SDF and we're going to change that to fog and also increase the resolution by setting the voxel size down to say three. Now I'm going to add a formula field. So come down to the fields menu, add the formula field, then select the volume builder and we want to drag that formula field down in here above the extrude. And if we look in the viewport now, you can see we've got this cube shape underneath. What we want to do is actually change the creation space from box, and we're going to set that to objects below. Now you can see the formula field is actually affecting the voxels there, and we're getting this change of values traveling through. Let's have a look what's going on. Select the formula field. Um, and the reason that it's traveling through is because we are taking the ID or the index of each voxel, dividing it by the count. And you can see that's then being added to D, which is delta time. We can also use subfields. If we switch to the subfields tab, you can see that that's currently empty. We've got our matrix object, and you can see that's distributing those points or matrices throughout our volume. If we drop that in and set that as a point object, hide our matrix and you can see that now we're getting um, an effect from our formula field where each point of our matrix is. Let's come back to the formula and have a look at exactly what's going on. So we're basically setting the initial value of the voxel 0.5 and then adding a sine wave to it and that sine wave is being emitted essentially from our subfields and also through the whole voxel field because of the ID and count. So we can essentially delete that part because I don't want it to do that. Um, and if we have a look at it now, you can see that we only have the sine wave where our matrices are. We don't need this part at the end. We can delete that as well. If we want, we can change the frequency down here and that will give us double the number of sine waves. As you can see, that kind of doubles up and you can create a ripply effect. The nice thing with the volume builder fog is it's very quick to preview as you can see but we can't really visualize what's going on if we wanted to mesh this so we can add a volume measure so we can have a look at the result and you can see there we go we've got this strange looking thing you notice however that as we play through we get this weird flashing let's just rewind come back up um, if we select the formula field and come to our subfield select the matrix and you can see down here we've got this radius let's switch off the measure so it's a bit quicker and you can see this is the radius of the sine wave that we're creating we make that bigger press play now we don't get that pulsing of black and white that we had before where the values are going between one and zero and the reason it's flashing on and off is because the mesh is either on or off it can't be anywhere in between so as it comes from zero to one at the halfway mark obviously the mesh switches on or off so you can see the text is still legible and the effect is working um, it's very regular and a little bit boring at the moment and that's because obviously our matrix object is a regular grid so let's select this matrix object and randomize it i'm just going to add in a random effector to randomize the um, position of those now under the parameter let's maybe just reduce the y position just so that they stay a little bit closer bring them in a bit on z to see how this looks let's enable our volume measure and hide the matrix object there you go and you can see that now we're getting a little bit more of a random result it's a bit more interesting for sure let's make it feel a bit more organic come to our volume builder and add in a fog smooth now by default it's set to a gaussian let's set that to median so we retain a fair bit of detail now depending on your voxel size will depend on how you um, kind of juggle these values at the moment it's pretty low res um, but you can see we're getting quite a nice interesting organic result we can make this a little bit more interesting by moving these matrices around. Currently they're at random positions, but they're static. So I'm going to add in a plane effector and just set the X, Y and Z position to 25. Switch to fields and add in a random field. And I'm going to use this 
with um, an animation speed of 100 which is probably a bit high but we'll be able to see it clearly and let's set the min to be minus 100 just gonna unclamp it as well now if we press play we should see because our matrices are moving around a little bit the points aren't actually emitting from exactly the same place you could probably move them a bit more than this to be honest okay let's just rewind this so that is basically the the setup and how you use it um, and the formulas that you use will change the result considerably just to give you an idea I'll show you a few things you can do so in this example I'm just going to create an instance of the volume builder and then put that into a mesher um, and we can select each of these let's just give them a color let's choose a nice blue color just so we can see the difference between the two meshes if we switch to the object tab and adjust the voxel range threshold if we take it low enough we're using a different range of values to create the mesh um, even though we're using the same setup and as you can see as we scrub through we kind of get the inverse of the effect on the other mesh feels pretty cool kind of organic ish um, let's rewind and have a look at how we can change this I'll switch off the instance version and let's reset the voxel range threshold at back up to 50 if we come to our volume builder and let's set the voxel size down maybe 1 1.5 so we've got a, little, a lot more resolution twice the resolution you can see we're getting a lot more detail in the mesh if we come to our fog we can set that to be a Gaussian blur now and it's going to soften everything up nicely still retaining quite a fair amount of detail now if we come to the formula again and at the bottom we can adjust the frequency let's set that to 6 okay and now we're going to have to come back to our voxel range adjust the threshold maybe if we increase that um, let's maybe reduce the voxel size down to one and there we go and you can see we're starting to get more of a result bring that voxel range threshold back down there we go and if we come in and have a look you can see we've got some quite nice detail there so that's a couple of different ways that you can use essentially the same technique in this example we used a matrix object pretty simple but you could use um, many different things for the subfields it could be a point object or particles etc um, I created a few different examples as you can see here um, all based on this very principle I didn't really even hardly change the formula and these are available for download so if you visit the um, tutorial page on the link below in the description I'll be able to download these files so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it